So the cops around Speaker's Corner seem to think it's their job to stop people speaking out against Islam, to stop someone who wants to say that she believes that Muhammad of the Islam faith, of Muslimism, is a false prophet. No one's saying that's the case. Uh, she believes it is. And if she wants to say so, uh, in a free country, I guess she should be allowed to. The police don't seem to understand that. It's extraordinary. And she says, this is classic two-tier policing. Uh, but to make that mistake once might be considered, uh, uh, you know, uh, careless. To do it twice seems like a policy, doesn't it? Uh, let's talk to uh, a man who knows a thing or two about preaching. He's a retired reverend, uh, Richard Fothergill. Hello, Richard. Hi, Kevin. Good to see you again. Uh, always a pleasure. Uh, yeah, two-tier policing. This is a, a Christian preacher. She's a former Muslim, actually, converted to Christianity. Her name is Hatton Tash. Tash, and a couple of years ago, she was preparing to make a speech. She doesn't like Islam. She was about to say so. She believes that Muhammad is a false pro prophet. And the police turn up and say, you can't make that uh, speech because it will upset these Muslims here. She's basically uh, took them to task on this and got 10 grand. Anyway, she, recently she did it again, and they arrested her again. And she spent all night in the cell. Uh, and they've had to give her 10,000 pounds compensation again uh, I mean you know I'm not trying to back her at what she wants to say in any way but if she doesn't believe if she believes Mohammed is a false prophet and she has questions about the Quran in a free country with freedom of speech especially at speaker's corner she should be allowed to say so shouldn't she I couldn't agree with you more and particularly at Speaker's Corner. I've actually been in Speaker's Corner myself once, back in the 90s, of course, back ages ago. And that's the whole point. Anybody can get up and have a debate and you can make the most outlandish claims or you could be the most challenging you like. And you get your soapbox and people can disagree with you and have a good discussion. You know, historically, that's what it's been there for. And we've understood that. But the, basically, the police are, are missing it. They're really missing it. And uh, this is, the, uh, she's quite right, this is an example of two-tier policing. They, they arrest the single woman on her soapbox when there's a mob, an Isra uh, Islamic mob, uh, you know, swearing at her and actually literally physically pushing her around. I saw the film of it. You know, the police have got the wrong end of the stick. They should be ensuring that anybody can speak and say things that speak as corner. That's the whole point of it. Yeah, I mean, she's quoted uh, as saying the police, as usual, just did exactly what the Muslim mob wanted them to do. They yeah. even sided with the men who had stolen my property and to this day have taken yeah. no action. The police have repeatedly taken away my rights and told me they cannot protect me because they do not want to offend a certain group of people. Well, we know... Uh, that all sounds very familiar, doesn't it? Remember the exactly, the, yeah. the early marches, the Palestine marches through yeah, London in particular. Funny. You know, was, uh, people climbing all over statues and defacing them. People chanting, you know, from the river to the sea and uh, anti-Semitic yeah. chants uh, were allowed to do so because the police did not want to inflame. Uh, the situation is somehow that they're allowed to do this, otherwise it might cause problems. I think the but police... But you see, that is, but that is the police, they are inflaming the situation, aren't they? Because, you know, when all the Palestinian rallies were going on every Saturday across the summer, the, you know, if you were Jewish, you didn't want to go anywhere near, because not surprisingly, you felt intimidated. Now, that's not fair. You know, every group in the country needs to be protected. The law needs to be neutral. But the police, the, certainly the Met, I think other police forces are a bit better, but the Met is, is particularly bad on this. They, they completely swallowed all the woke ideology, and particularly the, there's a sort of reverence for Islam, We're disproportionately so. I, I, it's very interesting. I was talking to, um, I don't know if you know a guy called Toby Young, head of, of free speech. Yeah, yeah, I know Toby, yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. He, he's, uh, he wrote about how the police at the Hendon Training College and then all the police forces across the country only two of them have a unit where they talk about in their education as young policemen and police women they have only have two of them have a unit where they talk about free speech and how it's important it's a british right of every citizen to express their own views about anything religion politics whatever they all of them except i think about four uh, police forces 
have DEI courses, which you have to pass. So you have to learn about a particular diversity, view of equality, and diversity, inclusion. equality, and inclusion. Yeah. yeah, which which is essentially pushing a particular political agenda. Yeah, and it's interesting the police force. You know, that's the thing. These coppers are coming through. These young men are trying to do their job, and they they think they're doing their job because they haven't been told otherwise. They haven't been taught how vital freedom of expression is in this country. Yeah, uh, and uh, if you go back to the, cast your mind back to the summer when the riots were going on, uh, there was a marked difference between police, the policing of the riots in Southport, Middlesbrough and around the country, and yeah. then suddenly there was a, a, a riot in uh, Birmingham, but the one yeah. in Birmingham was staged by Muslims, Yes. And uh, while the cops in the other places, Southport, etc., were coming yeah, down on the white working class rioters like a ton yeah. of bricks, having them in jail in about three days flat, the rest of them left, right and centre. When this riot erupted in Birmingham, the police were nowhere to be seen. And they Again, had... I saw some of the film footage. You're quite right. The police were, you know, by their absence. And we noticed it, didn't we? Yeah, and if you remember, there was a top cop from that region, the Midlands, went on to TV. TV the next day to explain, ah, yes, well, you see, there's particular concerns with uh, this particular uh, section of the community, and we spoke to our stakeholders and our partners and decided yeah. on the type of policing that was required in this situation. And this is a yeah. Muslim riot, and the type of policing they uh, decided was required was no policing at all. One guy yeah. was stabbed outside of a pub. Uh, drinkers yeah. in this pub in central Birmingham uh, were terrified to even leave the boozer because uh, really? there were no cops there. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. this is two-tier policing. They are, and if you, R Richard, if you speak to, I speak to a lot of uh, former cops in my line of business, yeah. and not a single one of them says that uh, uh, in any way uh, two-tier policing isn't a thing. They say you are always told to be very careful, particularly with the Muslim community. The right. police have yeah. got to stop this, haven't they? They've got to they stop They really have. I, I think the only way we're going to do it is doing things like you're doing, Kevin, of, of talking about it publicly, getting it into the media, getting it discussed, get, you know, try and engage some of these politicians to, uh, to think about this and recognise the problem. You know, that's the only way we're basically going to have this ha equality back in this area. Because at the moment, certainly some police forces like the Met are just out of order. They certainly are. Richard, always a pleasure to talk to you. Great to come on the show. Thank you very much. Richard Fothergill there, retired reverend. Uh, he's right, though, isn't he? Two-tier policing.